ground control to Major Tom. Can you hear me? Sounds great. Neat. Cool. Hi there. So to my understanding, because I no longer understand anything anymore, um, I go from 12 to 12.30, but before 12.30, we need to have a Q&A, right? Yes. So, and I'll be, you know, just keeping track. If there's anything I can answer, I'll answer. Do you want me to pause or you just want to handle them all at end? I'll, no, I'll, a little bit probably in between, then I can handle them all in the end so we can make Sounds that work. Good. All right. Well, then we need. So, I am going to test a share screen here. I've been really used to using WebEx. So, I am screen sharing. Are you able to see my screen? Looks good. It's the upper left hand corner of your screen, but um, so we see some of your desktop background as well. Okay. So, okay. Well, that should be. That should be fine. I'm on a wide screen here, so things get really fun after a while. So we will, all right, we will, we will make this work. All right, so am I am ready to go? Fire away? Fire away. Neat. My name is Professor Michael Van Etten, World Languages Finger Lakes Community College. I have spent over 300 hours broadcasting on Twitch, so an academic conference is a completely different mindset. So if I start to use terminology or other things that make absolutely no sense, at least you can't like smash that subscribe button and donate bits and stuff like that. That's just weird. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's probably for the best at this point. So I'm gonna move from this view to share my screen because I'm gonna talk about VoiceThread. So this is the slide that I have been asked to present unto all of you, utilizing VoiceThread recordings in an online learning environment. At Finger Lakes Communi Community College, we utilize VoiceThread to engage speaking tasks for our students in our world language courses, which include Spanish and French 101 through 204. So we've got you know, we, we generally manage this for every single class. It ends up being about 12 to 18 sections per semester, depending on how that goes. And then what we do with this is that we teach predominantly online. We have been teaching predominantly online for a very long time. And VoiceThread has helped us engage the, the speaking production aspect of online language learning, which is just a gigantic ball of fun when you think about that pedagogically. But anyway, let's get this slide out of the way here because that will be, that will be in the beginning of the recording here. And I understand that this session is being recorded. So cool. And so again, are you able to see the entire, the web browsers, my desktop? We should be okay with this, right? Yeah, it's a little on the small side, but you know, we can see I it. I wish I could see that which I was, I wish I could see what you are seeing. Is if you could share, just go to share screen and just share, uh, oh, your your browser, you, you're showing it through a browser, right? Yeah. Well, multiple, I've got multiple. Oh, so that's the why, got... yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I gotcha. Yeah, I'm across the board here and that, and I'm gonna write on my own desktop here. So okay. see if we can make this work here. But if I start getting off screen and you are not able to see the things of which I am seeing, please let me know. All right, we'll let you know. And we will make that work. I'm not seeing any share screen options that would let me modify this at all, but okay. So this is voicethread.com, so mouse on, and it's just simply, it's pen on, there we go, sorry working with my deck here, pen on. So this is simply voicethread.com. Are you able to see the writing? Yes. Voicethread.com, simply voicethread.com. Voicethread is a similar service to, like I was just watching, was it Flipgrid? And there's a bunch of others here, but Let's talk about utilization. Voicethread.com is an independent service. It is not associated with any of the learning management systems that you may be familiar with, but it is its own separate entity. Let's talk about what Voicethread does. Voicethread can either be done on a single user license or it can be done on a site license. You will see here single instructor or site wide. I have participated in both as a single instructor license and a site license just for any information if anybody wants that out there. Voicethread is about $99 a year for an individual license, single instructor, one instructor account and 50 students accounts. So what I'm gonna tell you right now, we avoid um, having students students 
generate their own accounts and rather you're going to see how they piggyback off of the the instructor account that we have we have utilized a site license that was ooh, about four or five years ago and it was messy and this was during the days where VoiceThread was just getting started on single sign-on and site licenses too messy for what we were going for with that so we went single instructor i purchased it myself and then the school reimbursed me for said expense we tried to keep that as simple as possible although i do know that the school is going back to trying to figure out if a site-wide license is worth it but again site-wide licenses are pretty much only worth it if you can get a good amount of the faculty to participate therein so I always say this in all of my presentations, and I say this in everything that I do, you can't hammer in a screw. And that's the idea that, listen, no one tool is gonna satisfy the needs for everything, nor will one tool be right for everybody in every situation. So the real question, of course, is what do you want to do with this? And you've gotta have a good thought process about what exactly is the learning objective that needs to be completed and how can it can be completed. Um, working in ed tech for a very, very long time, we tend to look as in like, we're looking for that magic bullet. We're looking for that one thing that is going to solve all of my problems, but instead flip your thinking. What is the problem that needs to be solved and work backwards on it? Because this is the 10th, 20th presentation that I've given on VoiceThread, and I see this pattern occurring. So make sure that you check your thinking first. Will VoiceThread solve all of your audio and video recording needs within a learning environment? Oh, dear God, no. Is VoiceThread perfect? Oh, dear God, no. But it's a tool and you work with it and you make it work, wipe the pen, moving on here. So, oh, there are, and I wanna talk a little bit about alternatives. Some of you have um, already discussed some of the alternatives. So let's say that you're here and you're looking at VoiceThread and VoiceThread doesn't quite work right for you. Um, the general comparatives to VoiceThread tend to be Go React. Go React is a competitor to VoiceThread. I have also seen people use YouTube, I can't spell anymore. Nah, it doesn't matter. YouTube, SoundCloud. Um, I have also seen some people do some interesting things on Google Slides. And so if VoiceThread doesn't end up working out for you, I'd highly recommend that you look at GoReact, YouTube, SoundCloud, Google Slides, all have that same thing. VoiceThread is for people that want to have audio, video, interactivity. It can be in a response form. It can be in a conversation. In as much as it is pretty threaded and done by topic, but it's audio video. That's what we're going for here is that it gives you a clean unified platform that students simply log in, go to click a button and make an audio and or video recording, whether it be in a one on one, whether it be in a large group setting, it all depends on how you want the slides to be set up on that. So wiping the pen and moving on. So Let's go see. This is voicethread.com. I'm going to get voicethread.com out of the way here. And actually, if you see sign-ins here for voicethread.com, this is the sign-in page for voicethread.com. Um, you can either, if you have your site wide, you can log in through an SSO on the site, but you'll see that there are generally no other options for login with Facebook, login with Google. Now, you, you, each student, and this is one of the first things that I do, every individual student needs to create a free VoiceThread account. And so we have not found a way to do an SSO, a single sign-on through their existing Finger Lakes email accounts or anything like that. It's simply an additional step that you're gonna have to be aware of and to be honest for the ease of use and for the, the simplification of the process, we find that a link in the syllabus that says this register for this, sign up for this, make it happen, was a heck of a lot easier than trying to mitigate single sign-on systems. So as you can see right here, we have got a Blackboard course. This is my Spanish 202 that literally wrapped up last night at 11.59 p.m. The screams of panic and despair are still fresh and are still going on right now. So 
as you can see here, this is my main module breakdown. We have six learning module breakdowns. When we click in the learning modules, and let me embiggen this just a little bit for us. Students have reading tasks, writing tasks, listening tasks, and then we hit speaking tasks here. So as you can see here in the Blackboard course, pen on, we've got a gigantic pile of directions. I have additional li uh, links to frequently asked questions and demo pages and tech demos and tech supports, which invariably our students use by the droves year after year. And then finally, you will see down here at the bottom an embedded voice thread into the module itself. And so for Blackboard, and my apologies because I'm not able to speak to D2L, to Moodle, to Canvas, or even other versions of Blackboard, as we've all known, the idea is that this is actually just a simple HTML embed. And this is simply a item in Blackboard. So many of you are going to ask, how do you get VoiceThread into Blackboard or into any learning management system, depending on how you want to do that? When you create a VoiceThread, which I will show you later on, when you create a VoiceThread, you have the option to link it anywhere you want. If you want to link it and put that link in Google Classroom, put that link in D2L, in Moodle, there you go. I've chosen to use an HTML embed, so much like a YouTube video, you know how you can embed YouTube videos into web pages, you can embed voice threads into your items, into Blackboard. Now, a long time ago, a few years back, white pen, a few years back there used to be a direct integration. Can I just directly integrate VoiceThread into Blackboard and make it a one-click solution? Yeah, we tried that. It was, again, messier than I would have liked. Like, does the VoiceThread have its own grading column in the VoiceThread, you know, in the Blackboard gradebook? And yeah, it did, but then it disabled my ability to use grading rubrics. So with all of that, kind of fun happening. We moved back again from a direct Blackboard, um, I want to call it a nugget, kernel implementation, a, an add-on for Blackboard. It exists. I wasn't happy with it. We got rid of it and just moved back to taking the code or the markup and just directly putting it into an item in Blackboard and it works. So we are all about just making things work here. So you'll see student instructions here. You'll see the Blackboard embed. And then the other thing I do underneath that is underneath the Blackboard embed, pen on, I also add an additional backup link to the voice thread itself, which opens in its own tab. So if I click here, boom, it opens up in its own tab. Mm, nope, too many buttons, too many buttons. So with that, we've got options for students to make their voice thread recordings directly within the Blackboard task itself, or opens up in a completely individual tab, completely separate from Blackboard, and operates from here. So there are a couple of things that I want to share with you, experiences of my own here. I've lost my desk scribble, so I am going to take this back for just one second. Uh, I'm not going to find it anymore. It's gone. So. This is Mozilla Firefox. Now, I want to preface this for just one second here. At Finger Lakes Community College, we are a suburban slash rural community college. The number one problem that we have with students is, is not just tech literacy, but also tech access and well, among other things, conventional literacy. So these courses that I'm sharing with you right now are meant for the first semester, non-traditional, um, may not have technology access in their own home, Spanish 101 general education student, which is just as general as they possibly get. And again, when it comes to the implementation of VoiceThread, and even Blackboard and other technologies, we have to make sure that the students even have access to a computer to begin with. 
a phone or you know if they have a phone there's a lot of rural areas around us that still do not have great cellular connectivity so you may ask why are we you know just tossing this into Blackboard instead of using single sign-on and direct implementation and using a module within Blackboard to implement because let's be honest for our student population if it does not work with one or two clicks they're not going to do the work at all so we've tried to simplify implementation as much as totally possible there's a lot of UI and UX design practices that essentially say the less clicks the better keep it simple and so if a lot of your questions are going to be based around well why didn't you do it this way why didn't you do it this way through trial and error we found a way to retain the maximum amount of students putting in here like that but then i go on and the reason why i just prefaced all of that with this is that as you can see i'm using the mozilla firefox browser browser i have taken my voice thread I have embedded it directly here into Blackboard and everything looks great here in the Mozilla Firefox browser. When I open up Google Chrome, this is the same Blackboard course. And I scroll down and you will see that it looks a little bit different. Well, local storage is disabled in your web browser. Uh, cookie settings, security settings, security suite settings, so maybe a Norton or something on top of traditional browser settings. We have found that working with embeds in here get a little weird. And if, you've, if you're teaching 200 students, be prepared for 10 to 20% to have some sort of security setting enabled that says, oh, we're not going to allow that embedded content. Well, you got to work around it. I spend a lot of my time telling students Chrome, Firefox, Safari on Mac, if you may notice, I'm running a Mac setup, Safari on Mac, the HTML5 implementation of VoiceThread is not great on Safari on Mac. I would avoid that if at all possible. Uh, Microsoft Edge, uh, again, hit and miss. Some students tell me it works just fine. Others tell me it don't. So here's where we go. We have students, I'm gonna jump back to Firefox. This is VoiceThread as it works. What do I do with my students in this classroom? So students create a free VoiceThread account, as in my students do not create VoiceThreads, but what they do is they comment on the ones that I have created. So for example, when you log into VoiceThread, you see this homepage of all of the different VoiceThreads that I have created. I have created individual voice threads for every single speaking task in every single language course. And then my students comment on the ones that I have created. If a student creates a free account with VoiceThread, they should be able to create one, although they may have changed it in the last year, they should be able to create one free voice thread or maybe two, um, and then comment all they want on everyone else's voice threads. But the idea is, is that if a student starts generating their own voice threads, they're gonna have to pay soon. And so one of, our, one of our ethos here at FLCC is that we refuse to make students pay for more things than they possibly can. So that's why you're gonna see that I have created all of the base voice threads here. And then a student gets this and then they turn to the slide. Voice thread is set up like slides. So, for example, I have task instructions here. Repeat the question numbers, conversation questions, and answers in complete sentences to the best of your ability in Spanish. Como se llama usted? And then on the next page, my students have to create a story that's going to tell about physical health of the specific family members, the mental and emotional health, suggest the ways. And as you can see here on the left-hand column, we've got Jaime Jaroreto, we've got Rhys Lenaz, we've got Carolyn Pollock. These are my students that have commented, although it should have been, here on this slide here. So my students see this picture and I ask them, you are going to need to write a story utilizing the concepts and materials that we have covered in this learning module to tell me about their health, 
Tell me about their names. Tell me about their emotional and mental states and what you would recommend. What activities could they do to elevate or improve their mental or emotional states? And so I'm just going to click on Rebecca here. And I'm pretty sure you're probably not able to hear desktop audio on my setup here. No, you have to click that when you do share. I, so if you stop oh. share and reshare, when you share your screen, there's a button to click to, to do that. Okay, so real quick then, share computer sound, share. And so we'll do one more here. Y hoy es el cumpleaños de mi abuelo. And, any better there? Yes, we heard it that time. Nice. Okay. So Rebecca here is using the instructions on the previous slide is created a detailed narrative. Mi abuela about this se llama Jorge y él tiene 70 años. Mi abuela, Carmen, tiene... And so every individual student here has created an individual narrative and has simply recorded, voice recorded their narrative onto this slide. Now, on my end, this makes my life infinitely easier because I'm not receiving hundreds of YouTube links or audio recordings or phone recordings. We allow one place to aggregate all recordings together, period. And so I see Adriana here. Adriana, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Sorry, I kind of, I'm a language teacher, so I tend to make names weird. Sorry. Can students listen to all the voice recording of their classmates? Your option. So students, students can um, be able to listen to the voice recordings of the previous students. Or you can have students create private recordings that are only accessible to the owner of the voice thread, me. And so your choice. I tend to keep these open because I find that private recordings, they work really well, but sometimes students get a little flustered. On the other side of that coin, I do have students that are like, Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to listen to the person before me and copy everything that they say. And then they both fail. It's hilarious. So six of one, half a dozen of the other, all depends on how you want to put this together. Can students <laughs> want to avoid them copying their classmate? Adriana, you're absolutely right. You want to avoid them to copy their classmates. Their classmates, I find it better though to kind of leave it uncomplicated because A, I call them out immediately. Wow, you two have made exactly the same errors at the following 12 points. Mm, that's not going to fly. On the other hand, yeah, they both end up failing it directly. How many comments can be on each slide? Can students reply to other comments? Can they reply to student recordings? So how many comments can be on a slide? I've had hundreds. I think I've got a demo icebreaker one just for them to get used to the technology. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I have not yet hit a limit. Can students delete and replace a voice thread comment if they mess it up? Oh boy, can they. And I highly recommend that I do. I tell my students, make one recording and make it count. And if you mess up, delete it and do it again. Invariably, every semester, I have one student make 26 recordings, like one for each sentence or something like that. And I tell them, please don't do that. And generally for the other modules, it works through. Can students choose to make the comment private to you or public to class, or is that an instructor decision? Students do have the ability to create a private comment. So if we take a look down here upon the screen of which I am showing you, you will see a little bubble tab here at the bottom that says comment. When you click, you need to sign into VoiceThread to make a comment. Okay, fine. I'm going to bounce over to Chrome here. And so I'm going to open up the VoiceThread here in a separate page. Here are the comments. So here in the comment wheel here, we have text comments. Students can call in on their phone. So if their computer explodes and there is no mic and no anything like that, students have a phone. They can click the make a comment using their phone. However, students do have to purchase a minute pack from VoiceThread to make this work. I have had students do this where I warned them and said, listen, you can call in using your phone, but you've got to pay for that. And they're like, okay, I can do that because I don't have a working microphone on my phone. This is your traditional audio recording. Students can make video recordings. I recommend that my students do. I would say like one every year actually can, but students are able to record video comments. Now, I'm not going to click that button right now because I don't know how Zoom and Mac are going to handle multiple video input sources at the same time, or they can upload things here. So yes, as you can see in this demo voice thread, everybody's accounts shows up here on the left-hand side. I'm able to go through 
and make that work, but they can make video comments. So they can actually speak to you using video. They can make audio comments. They can doodle. They can scribble all over the slides that I have provided. So what I do is I create slides in PowerPoint or Keynote, and then VoiceThread lets me just upload picture, 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 and then you can address it that way. So this is a the simplest implementation possible. You can also take short videos that you create and have students respond to lectures. I know instructors that have done entire lectures in VoiceThread and students have to ask questions or respond, create a response to the lecture video in which they are watching. Now, again, this is where I'm not going to hammer in a screw. I, everybody's got different levels of implementation. It does allow you that level of creativity to say, I'm going to create this. I'm going to embed this here in the voice thread. As you've already noticed, this is the simplest implementation to get you started today. You create a voice thread, you link it into your Blackboard course, students make an audio recording, done. Now, if I wanted to give audio feedback to my students, and I'm just double checking my notes in time here, if I want to give audio feedback to my students, I click on Rebecca here, as you can 68 see. 68 años, uh, años. Años. And I'm not logged in here, but there would be options for me to create a reply to Rebecca. And so by creating a reply to Rebecca, I could create private replies. So only Rebecca here will hear my audio feedback. For example, El tiene 40 años. <laughs> no, we, we, we don't do that. El tiene 40 Años. So I am allowed to give audio response feedback back to Rebecca here. And that was the big one for me, is that not only was I able to hear it, but I was able to give audio feedback. Now, how do I grade this then? Because as you've noticed, this is not a module embed. This is not something that's directly implemented. This is just a simple item in Blackboard. Well, what I do generally is on one frame here, I have the voice thread, and then I literally in a separate window, not in course tools, tools and grade center, speaking tasks, open link in new window. There, in one window, I have my Blackboard gradebook. In the other window, I have voice threads, and I use the grading rubrics that I have already created in Blackboard. I listen to the voice thread, I fill out the rubric, I add comments, I make a voice recording if one is necessary. It's simple, again, there are far more complex ways to more deeply integrate VoiceThread, but this is the simplest, fastest implementation. And then you can get fun after that. And Drew asks, can students reply to other students creating a thread? Yes, although if I recall, it's only at a single level. So for example, if another student wanted to reply to Rebecca's recording here, then they would be able to create a recording, a reply recording, but then that doesn't stack deeper. It's just a single one. Now, everybody in the class is also able, so Rebecca here could have, you know, a hundred responses to hers, but it doesn't descend any deeper, not at least in the implementation that I've been using. I have not heard of that feature yet. And it is now 12.29 p.m. I've gone as fast as I possibly could here, but go to voicethread.com. You create a free account with one free voice thread. Then try embedding it then try adding more media to it. It really is robust, but the idea is that make sure that the primary function of VoiceThread is really that audio-visual communication. Do you want students to make videos back at you? Do students want to make recordings back at you? Stuff like that. The idea is that you're seeing each other, you're hearing each other, and you can simply and effectively aggregate it all to a single place. Done. What do you got? Yeah, right on time. Um, that you still have two, one minute, but uh, the, you, there are no other uh, questions in the Q&A. I just want to sort of emphasize again what you just said about figuring out, using it for, with the audio visual pieces. So I've used it myself, um, but, you know, for more like a traditional discussion, hoping that students would use it for audio and maybe do a webcam post. And unless you require that they do that, they will not, and they will just type text in, and that makes it sort of not really worthwhile uh, you might as well just use the LMS if you're just going to have them use text. So, you got uh, it. yep. And a lot of campuses do have it 
you know, like I, I teach for Brockport and it's, there's a site license at Brockport. So if any Brockport people out there are interested, there's a site license. Yeah, the site licenses make it nice. So that if you've got five or 10 faculty members that want to aggregate materials and easily distribute voice threads amongst each other or access to each other, at FLCC, there are only two of us that are doing Spanish and French. So we just sit next to each other and talk. But yeah, it's, it's however you make it work for you. Nobody else out there, really. I was expecting to be grilled alive here. Chris, you're still muted. Oh, I think we have a half there an hour we. breather now for everyone. Uh, and so uh, thank you, Michael. That was, that was excellent. Uh, I think Victoria can probably stop the recording.